everyone. This is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio. And today I'm just gonna go over something very quickly that may help you in a situation where you have dried out paint. I purchased this painting from Gick Angel or G-I-C Angel and I was swatching all the paints and I opened this one up and it is dried out. So let me show you what I mean by drawn out, it is like this. So it's unusable completely. So what am I going to do to revive this paint? Let's talk about that. I have diluted flow aid in this little jar. For every 20 drops of water, I have one drop of flow aid. In this jar, this bottle, this is Liquitex flow aid and it is my number one, besides clear gesso, they're tied for first place, must have item. This is an additive. So what we're going to do is I've got a dropper in here in my flow aid, and I'm going to start adding drops of flow aid to try to revive this paint. Now, a lot of people would use water, and the problem with just water is that it can get so diluted that this paint would be transparent. Well, I'm finding that all, almost all of these paints are transparent anyway, but I wanted to use this as an example for what to do if you end up with this kind of gloppy mess right here. So I'm gonna take my dropper with Flow Aid and carefully, because I am doing this over my canvas, I'm gonna add a lot of Flow Aid, okay? Down in that little hole right there. Now I'm gonna take something to stir it with. You guys, it doesn't matter what you stir with. I don't get as much leverage off of a toothpick. A lot of people use a toothpick. It's whatever you have. I'm using the back of one of our cheap paintbrushes. It's a very thin handle. And I'm going to try to get this excess paint out of this lid. I, I wanna salvage this too um, and put it down in here. And then we're gonna to try to stir now. This is the most dried out paint I have ever had. And I have revived some really dry paint in the past with this technique. So I'm not sure this is going to work as well as I'd like, but we're gonna try it because I'll be darned if I'm going to throw out a paint on a brand new paint by number, and I'll be darned if I'm going to try to call them or email them and get a replacement. I haven't been able to contact this customer service for other things. I just can't imagine I'd be able to contact them for paint and it would probably take two weeks to get it. I'm in no rush to start this piece because I'm so disgusted by the transparency of the paints. So um, I probably won't, won't paint it. Probably will never paint it unless I do an entirely new palette. But in the meantime, let's talk about what we're getting here. So you can see I was able to kind of get it all chopped up. Now what I'm gonna do, and I do this back and forth, there is no rhyme, there is no reason, and there is no recipe for this. I'm going to squeeze out all of the flow aid out of this dropper into my bottle, and then I'm coming over here to my diluted flow aid, and I'm gonna get it about halfway full. I'm not gonna use all of this, but I'm gonna just drop some of this in there, okay? About a quarter of what I had in that dropper. And I'm going to stir again. Now, if you're not able to stir it at all, let it sit with the lid closed, come back to it later so that the flow aid can absorb into the paint a little bit and it'll soften it up. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of chop at this. You can see big chunks coming up. I don't like to give up on a paint right off the bat. I mean, I will work with this. I know it takes a little extra time, but it's worth it if you want you know, to paint something that you might've had sitting around in the paint dried. Well, now watch out because that's going to come falling out of there. But the good news is it's so chunky. <laughs> I'll just push it back in there. All right, so I've added some diluted flow aid, but I'm going to go back. I want to make sure this, this dropper is completely empty of diluted anything. And I'm going to go back into my flow aid because I want to be careful. I don't want to add water to this big bottle. And then I'm going to drop in a lot of just pure flow aid. Okay, push it down in there. I wanna make sure all of it gets wet. 
that I would never do this over a canvas normally, but I was in the middle of recording this video, this review video, and I stopped to do this. So I didn't want to take it away and restart and all that stuff. So just call it laziness. All right, so now you're starting to see it get a little more liquefied and I still have big chunks. So I'm just gonna kind of push it in there, break up those thick pieces a little bit so they can get all wet. And what I would do at this point is let this set for a little bit and with the lid closed and I will come back to it and check it out. So I'll be back. I've let this paint set for about five minutes and I'm going to test it again, see if I can stir it up any better. If I have any more luck with that. Now you can already see that it's in a lot better shape than it was before, but let's see if we can get it stir so that we can get a creamy consistency. Now I will take this little paintbrush end and I will like chop, <laughs> but what I'm doing is I'm bringing up the clumps to the side of the paint pot and I'm pressing them in to get them loosened up because I don't want this come flying out of here, you know, so I'm just trying to break up some of these little chunks. And you'll see some of them wanna bail on me. So it's really kind of scary doing it with this canvas underneath. Let me move the canvas real quick and so I can get really serious about this. Okay, so I'm working over a silicone mat that is water resistant, it is fabulous. And one day very soon, I will be doing a studio tour once I get everything finished in this studio and you guys will be able to see what I've done and what kind of equipment I have and everything. In the meantime, let's chop this paint up because I'm getting super frustrated. Okay, so now I'm going to try to stir, bringing it from the bottom to the top and stirring it around. You'll notice air bubbles. It's not, it's not a thing. It doesn't really mess with it or anything. I haven't noticed any difference when I've painted with, after this technique. I've never noticed really any difference in the paint after I've mixed it up like this. Um, so I don't think the air bubbles are an issue at all. Now I have found that more flow aid, less water with your dilution is the, is the key. So even though I did use a little diluted flow aid, for the most part, the straight flow aid is really what works the best. I just add a little diluted to give it some water so it's easy to mix up, but definitely use more straight flow aid than diluted flow aid. guys will notice this is a pretty messy process. What I will do after I finally get it mixed up, I will wipe the edge of my paint pot before I close it because I don't want any of that paint drying. You don't ever want any paint on the outside rim of your paint pot. This will cause you to have paint on it because it's mixing it and it's stirring it and it's kind of going up over the edges, but clean it before you close it. get one more little tool that is handy for this process. It's just something that I happen to have in all my craft stash. I'm going to close it only for a second, then I'm going to clean that off. Now I've got this little wooden stick. The reason I got this is because it's going to allow me to push this clumpy stuff up against the edge a little bit better. Now it is hard to control it, but I will be able to really get in here and squish these clumps. Pull from the bottom push against the edge. All right, once I get it to a certain point, I'll go back to my paint stick, paintbrush handle. But you can see it is getting there, slowly but surely. I'm gonna wipe off the rim with my cosmetic wipe. Whatever you have, if you just have a wet paper towel or whatever, that's fine. Just make sure you don't have any paint on the rim. And up in here, 
I kind of just wipe around the edge a little bit if it looks like there's anything down in those little cracks. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit more Stripe Flow Aid. So I added about, mm, I don't know, 10 drops right there. Now, if I leave this, you'd still see some little clumps. If I leave this and I come back and I stir it again, then I am going to have a creamy paint. So I'm gonna show you some before and afters of what that is um, with some photos I did the other night when I was messing around with this. So let me show you with the end of my paintbrush while I'm holding it close. You can see it's got some little chunks still in it but as this sets up, it's going to loosen those chunks and get to the consistency that we need. All right, so I'm gonna leave it here for now. I will take a photo of it after it is totally set up and I mess with it a little bit and show you guys what the before and after was for this particular paint but definitely an improvement. Now I will tell you this whole process has taken about 15 minutes total because I let it set for five and then I've stirred and so it is a process. Your other alternative would be to totally remix this color. If you only have one color dried out in your paints, um, go ahead and remix it with your like Arteza paints that I've talked about, my acrylic, the Arteza acrylic paints or just replace it with one from another paint set that you might have finished. Um, those are a couple of options, but this will be creamy and perfect consistency by the time I come back to it and go to use it. Okay, so this is the final end result of adding more and more flow aid straight out of the bottle to this paint and working it. and stirring it. So you can see that the consistency is a lot more creamy. It is thinner, but it is flow aid thinner. So it, is, it shouldn't dilute the paint and the, you know, the opacity of it. Um, I will let it set up some more. And if I come back to this and it's still a little bit clumpy, I can add just a couple more drops of pure flow aid and stir it up and it should go back to being just like it is. Thank you guys for being here with me today. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You will be notified of new videos if you will do that. And make sure you give me a thumbs up and also comment, tell me what you think of this technique and uh, go join me on Patreon because Patreon is my new baby and it will be my priority between YouTube and Patreon. But I will give you some information about Patreon in the description below and here is the link right here where you can go find out information on my website about Patreon and what it involves and includes. And you guys, I hope this was very helpful for you. I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you back soon. Thanks as always for watching.